In the tumultuous realm of professional boxing, no stage commands the spotlight quite like the illustrious domain of the heavyweights. Amidst the global spectacle, these fighters navigate a path towards glory. Fueled by the primal allure of being recognized as the mightiest combatants in the entire world. While other weight classes in boxing have their own unique appeal and dedicated fan bases, the heavyweight division's combination of historical significance, global appeal, and the potential for high stakes has made it perhaps the most popular and widely followed division in the sport. And today, in a journey spanning 15 years and 56 combined professional bouts, two distinctively recognized champions stand out from the rest. The more physically imposing and boastful out of the two comes as the self-proclaimed Gypsy King, a six-foot-eight giant born from a long lineage of bare-knuckle and professional boxing. With the WBC World's title as proof of his prowess, Tyson Fury is currently at the peak of his career and widely recognized as the number one heavyweight on the planet. Such a prominent position, however, can never go unchallenged. And his counterpart, an equally charismatic world champion with just as much enigma, holds a remarkable journey of his own, ranging from Olympic triumphs to multiple titles in multiple weight divisions. And with three out of the four heavyweight trinkets already in his grasp, he makes a daring attempt for the Gypsy Giant's precious green and gold accolade. Our world won this fight. Yeah. For far too long, fight fans have bemoaned the state of the heavyweight division. Numerous talks have been held over numerous occasions to pair up the world's top heavyweights. But it's taken until now, with the help of a peculiar broker in the Middle East, for all of the major world honours to be at stake between the two clear-cut leaders of the division. You're fighting the best British heavyweight there's ever been. You beat all the rest of them, we win beat Tyson Fury at Sausage. And this February, in the scorching heat of Saudi Arabia, audiences will finally get the answer for who truly is the best heavyweight of this era. Welcome to the Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk fight countdown. The last time boxing witnessed an undisputed heavyweight champion in the ring was over 24 years ago, when Lennox Lewis defeated Evander Holyfield. We should have trauma tonight! In what is now labelled as the Three Belt Era, Lewis snapped up all of the championship belts from the recognized sanctioning bodies. And though the Briton did immediately relinquish one of the titles, achieving the undisputed status was an important step in securing his position as the number one heavyweight. And the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis! But over two decades have since passed. And with the exception of the great Vladimir Klitschko, many titleists have graced the division without being able to claim unequivocally that they are the best of their era. Oh, the closest claimant to that status today, however, will argue differently. You don't need me to introduce the WBC World Heavyweight Champion defending the title again. Tyson Fury is the current champion of perhaps the most prestigious sanctioning body the WBC. And with two colossal scalps on his resume in Vladimir Klitschko and Deontay Wilder, the general consensus remains that he deservedly occupies the number one position. He's best heavyweight in the world, by far. He said it from day one, best heavyweight in the world, ain't no one beating him, nobody. <laughs> but should a whisper of doubt exist in that declaration, 
it will be due to the recent arrival of a charismatic Ukrainian by the name of Alexander Usyk. He's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> a man who has already achieved undisputed as a cruiserweight and now seeks to double down in the most celebrated division of all. There's one belt that you still do not have. It's occupied at the moment by Tyson Fury. I'm sure that Tyson Fury is not retired yet. I'm convinced he wants to fight me. I want to fight him. And if I'm not fighting Tyson Fury, I'm not fighting at all. In just one swoop, Usyk captured the WBA, IBF and WBO World Heavyweight titles and has immediately targeted what will undoubtedly be his most challenging foe to date. One that's battled through the highs and lows in perhaps the most fascinating story occupied by an active fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome heavyweight sensation Tyson Fury. When Tyson Fury was first unveiled as a professional in 2008, his world-level abilities and star power were not immediately visible. Tyson Fury is the best prospect in world boxing and he is going to shake up the heavyweight division like it hasn't been shaken up. Only the trained eye of promoter Mick Hennessy could unravel the Gypsy Giant's potential as he began showcasing him up and down the country in a series of profile-building fights. By 2011, his team were ready to raise the stakes when they challenged a fellow undefeated prospect, Derek Chisora, for the British Heavyweight Championship. For the new British Heavyweight Champion. Success here forced the wider boxing audience to finally recognize a new leader of the domestic heavyweight scene. And with a faithful promoter backing his lofty expectations for world title glory, the team launched a long and arduous campaign of fighting internationally ranked fighters to force themselves into mandatory positions. I've always felt that this was Tyson's destiny. When I first signed him, and I thought, this kid's got something very, very special. Mm -hmm. If we do the right things together, we can go all the way to the pinnacle of sport, the heavyweight title. Dominant wins over Kevin Johnson, Steve Cunningham, and finally Christian Hammer eventually set Tyson Fury up for the biggest prize in boxing. The reigning unified heavyweight champion of the world, Deville Meister, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Klitschko. Aptly named Dr. Steel Hammer, the great Vladimir Klitschko enjoyed a decade-long rule over the heavyweight division. And in Tyson Fury, the Ukrainian would be making the 19th defense of his throne, with the hope of equaling the record of Larry Holmes. You've never fought a gypsy king before, have you? You've never fought a king before. You're looking at one of your me. 55,000 fans packed the Dusseldorf Arena in Germany to watch their adopted hometown hero make what they assumed would be another routine defense. But in Tyson Fury stood an equally imposing figure with an added dose of fluidity and a confusing fighting style. The constant feints, the switching of stances and an ever-present jab subdued the heavyweight champion throughout the entire 12 rounds. And for the first time in over a decade, the heavyweight division finally experienced a changing of the guard. A career-defining victory, earning Fury what is still, to this day, his most valuable scalp. But as monumental as his crowning moment was, his ensuing fall from grace would nullify all that he had gained. A collapse in the mandatory rematch and numerous personal problems forced the new champion into a dark exile from the entire sport. You don't like it, change the station. You don't like it, don't take photos. You don't like it, don't print it in your newspaper. Do I care? Not really. His newly acquired world titles were subsequently scattered across the division as new title holders emerged in his three-year absence. Not one of the current heavyweights at the moment could ever be considered the man of their era, unless they beat me. The changing of the heavyweight landscape coupled with extreme weight gain meant Fury had quickly become a forgotten name. 
and after a long process of mental and physical rehabilitation, an official return to the ring wouldn't be made until the summer of 2018. I finally had enough. I can't be avoided and put back to the curb anymore. You know, I'm here, I'm willing and I'm ready to fight. Strong scepticism still remained in Fury's ability to get back to the top of the sport. And after just two comeback bouts against low-tier opposition, a powerful statement to restore public confidence was desperately needed. Well, let's bring in the man holding that coveted green strap, the undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world. This would come unexpectedly in the form of Deontay Wilder, the WBC world champion and widely regarded as the most fierce puncher in the entire sport. The Americans saw in Tyson Fury a decayed former champion, in which a victory would grant him a favourable negotiating position against his then-rival, Anthony Joshua. But unbeknownst to Wilder, the decision to select the Gypsy King as his next opponent would entangle him in a three-fight chapter to stamp his ultimate demise, and Fury's rebound to the top of the sport. Twelve rounds of boxing in a showdown of heavyweight giants. Their first encounter saw Fury surprise both Wilder and the entire boxing world by returning to the unorthodox fleet-footed style that earned him his championships three years prior. Well, Wilder for me has been outboxed in this fight so far. And though he was required to climb off the canvas twice in the face of Wilder's power, Fury battled to a draw and earned rave reviews in a fight many thought he deserved to win. Split decision draw! That's the second best heavyweight in the world behind me. The highly anticipated rematch then followed 15 months later, with Fury this time around entering the ring as a restored, fully-fledged heavyweight operating at peak fitness levels. Good jabs again, and the right hand! Terrific shot from Fury! A noticeably more aggressive and confident approach prevented Wilder from gaining a firm foothold in the fight. And much to the astonishment of all in attendance, the WBC World Heavyweight title changed hands in seven remarkably one-sided rounds. Now into the fifth. And oh, Wilder in trouble again. He is there, Wilder. I don't think he's got that one shot. And he's gone. He's gone. The most dangerous puncher in the sport was reduced to a debilitated and defenseless shadow of his usual self, forcing his corner to intervene and complete Tyson Fury's official return to the top of the heavyweight division. The fight's all over. They framed the tower in from the Wilder corner. And Tyson Fury is the heavyweight champion of the world. But the proud competitor in Wilder, who had held his title for four dominant years, was never going to stomach such a humiliating defeat. And thus ensued 18 bitter months of cheating allegations and court arbitrations to force Tyson Fury to honour his rematch obligation. As you see, I'm wearing my red outfit, so I want it back in blood. So when it's like You're in that... in denial and you're getting knocked out. Due to the one-sided nature of the previous meeting, Many observers dismissed the third and final bout as a pointless rehash of a predictable ending. And up until the third round, their sentiments seemed justified. But if this highly contentious rivalry had taught fans anything, it was that victory should never be assumed when Deontay Wilder's power is involved. The most belittled fight out of the trilogy suddenly turned into the most enthralling encounter from the entire series. Wilder's surprise resistance startled both Fury and his corner team for a while as the back and forth action continued up until round 11 for Fury to once and for all extinguish the bronze bomber threat. Although the Deontay Wilder saga besieged the Briton in a prolonged bitter feud with numerous scares, it did provide an immediate return to the prime status he previously earned. The Gypsy King, Tyson!
an inspiring revival of a career that six years prior seemed depressingly bleak. And perhaps the most interesting aspect of Fury's comeback was that he managed to outlive all of the new titleists that emerged in his absence. Let's just say I'm the lineal champion of my era. I can only be the best of my day. I'm the generation fighter. It's even the guys from today, like Anthony Joshua, and they're all good champions, but without sounding too sharp and clever, I place myself right on top of the pile. The WBC champion was now unanimously considered the best heavyweight on the planet. But as is often the case in boxing, such a position would inevitably invite a new contender to make a compelling case of his own. Just two weeks before Fury's conclusive victory against Wilder, the former undisputed cruiserweight champion Oleksandr Usyk made his mark on the heavyweight division by dethroning Fury's other long-term rival, Anthony Joshua. Winning the WBA, WBO and IBF titles from an accomplished champion in Joshua upheld the belief of Usyk supporters that any conversation pertaining to the best heavyweight in the world must now involve him. The confidence emanating from the Usyk camp comes as no surprise considering his decorated amateur career, which recorded 335 wins out of 350 bouts. Crowning moments included gold at the 2008 European Championships, the 2011 World Championships and the 2012 Olympic Games in London. He has done it. He has done it. The world champion, the number one seed in this tough division. With notable amateur victories over future world-class operators under his belt, Usyk entered the professional scene in late 2013. Standing at 6 foot 3 inches, he found his ideal weight as a cruiserweight and quickly rose through the ranks with his strong amateur pedigree paving the way for him to compete for his first world title in just three years. Defeated challenger and number one contender from Kiev, Ukraine, Alexander The champion he was about to face was the undefeated 26-0 Krzysztof Golovacki, who had recently secured the WBO title by knocking out Marco Hark. Hark is in major trouble! It's yeah. over. over! It's over! The streak is over! Wow. Golovacki with the amazing... But despite Golovacki's impressive run of form, the distinct advantages in skill and movement were overwhelmingly on the Ukrainian side. Who, as the fight progressed, added layers to his performance with body assaults and accurate combinations to the head. The pole, durable to the last round, could do nothing to overturn the tide and prevent his championship switching hands via a unanimous decision. Just 10 fights in, Usyk was emerging as a frightening proposition for anyone at 200 pounds. And his mission was evident, to hunt down the remaining champions in his division. Uh, <laughs> in his first defense, he faced the undefeated Michael Hunter, a highly regarded prospect who later found success in the heavyweight division. And immediately following the win came the chance to establish himself as a true elite, when it was announced that the world's best cruiserweights would compete in the coveted World Boxing Super Series. Welcome to the World Boxing Super Series, a new revolutionary... It was an eight-man single elimination tournament, one in which Usyk would need to battle through a streak of proven world champions, both past and present, to demonstrate his worth. What's the name of your opponent? It's Marco Hook. Marco Hook it is. Please join us up on stage. And to kick off the series, he drew a man who once held his current world's title for six dominant years. 
The bout took place in the challenger's home country, at the Max Schmeling Arena in Berlin, Germany. As expected, Marco Huck brought the grit and determination required to keep the champion alert throughout the duration of the bout. But the skill disparity was far too evident, as Usyk landed at will from the opening bell with a plethora of power shots from all angles. The German began fading further in the latter rounds, and it appeared Usyk could end the fight at any time. The punishing action finally took its toll as the referee intervened in round 10, securing Usyk's advancement into the next round, as well as a clear marker that he was the most threatening force in the competition. That's Alexander Usyk is the reigning WBO champ, the tournament number one seed, and he means business. And what a message he has sent out tonight. The second fight, the semi-final, introduced the 23-0 WBC champion, Myris Bradis considered by many to be the tournament's second favourite. So the, the Latvian was a skilled puncher in his own right and contributed to the technical firefight that fans hoped for. But despite his intense pace in the middle rounds, Usyk eventually seized control with a blistering combination of his own. This is the biggest fight of his career as he lands with a good left hand which drives British backwards. British becoming a little bit disorganised on the ropes, drops his hand. The Latvian did eventually recover to match Usyk in the closing segments of an unrelenting and closely contested fight. But the former Olympic medalist deservedly emerged as the winner by majority decision, becoming the new unified WBC and WBO cruiserweight champion. Alexander Usyk! But as thrilling as that semi-final performance was, one more hurdle stood between Usyk and the undisputed cruiserweight championship. Murat Gassiev, a 26-0 puncher, excelling in brute strength and raw knockout power. As the unified IBF and WBA champion, he was coming into this highly anticipated final with two brutal stoppages. But whatever the violence he planned to unleash, it was no match for Usyk's sharp jabs and educated footwork. So here we go then, the battle for the undisputed Cruiserweight World Championship is underway, round one, scheduled for 12. Even a brief moment of success in the fourth was shaken off by the Ukrainian's impressive chin, as the Russian appeared stylistically outmatched against a dazzling southpaw offense. Beautiful left hand at the end of that volley of punches once again. Favoured to win the competition from the outset, Usyk saved his most dominating performance for last as all three judges scored wide in his favour. The 31-year-old, already a gold medalist from London 2012, had now battered his way through Marco Huck, Myris Bradis and Murat Gassiev, all on foreign soil, to emerge as the undisputed best in his weight division. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause, if you would, for the new undisputed cruiserweight world champion and the winner of the Muhammad Ali Trophy, Alexander Usyk. This remarkable achievement alone would have been an ideal farewell to the cruiserweight division. However, in boxing, boosting a fighter's profile remains an essential component in furthering their standing amongst the sport's best. Superstar. I'm superstar. No. Superstar. No, no, no. Megastar. Superstar. No, no, no. And so, in November of 2018, Usyk briefly returned to the UK for a high-profile bout with Tony Bellew to deliver a spectacular eighth-round knockout to endear him to a new set of fans eager to see him return against other local opponents. Thank you. He deserves all the success in the world. I only wish you greatness. Thank you. But the Ukrainian's cruiserweight exploits, even in the earlier phases, sparked speculation about his potential against bigger opponents in the class above. Even his 2012 Olympic glory at 91 kilograms was seen as a forewarning to future heavyweights of his impending incursion. 
It just so happened to be that his inauguration at the higher weight took place during Tyson Fury's well-documented return to the top of the heavyweight division. But Usyk's new venture for now endured skepticism from a few remaining cynics who doubted his physical ability to compete with heavier opponents. And his long-awaited bow at heavyweight is very nearly upon us. Nonetheless, his new campaign began with a one-sided stoppage win against Chaz Witherspoon before seeking out a more challenging bout in the UK against veteran Derek Chisora. The former British champion and world title contender offered a spirited, rugged approach, helping the Ukrainian acclimatize to a new environment. Heavyweight world, you're so up for this one, man. Yeah, well, straight away, Chisora is trying to get on top of him. He knows he's got to force the pace. He can't stand on the outside. A unanimous points decision here, however, gave Usyk's retractors more ammunition to discount his chances against the division's elite. They're, they're hard shots. Oh, good action here. And Usyk opening up. And now he's backing Chisora up. But being the WBO mandatory, Usyk was in the ideal position to silence those naysayers. Anthony, hello. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm coming, Usyk. And in 2021, activated his world title request to challenge the exemplary Anthony Joshua, who for the better part of four years held three of the four major belts and made a strong case of his own for being the best heavyweight in the world. Despite one shock upset loss to Andy Ruiz, the unified champion was on a return to form that originally positioned him as Tyson Fury's opponent for the undisputed crown. Unquestionably, it would have been the highest grossing fight in British boxing history. But such a tantalizing matchup was cruelly snatched away from the public after Fury's squabbles in the courtroom with Deontay Wilder, and now Usyk's insistence on activating his mandatory position. Anthony. How are you? I'm coming for you. In sharp contrast to the mayhem brewing in Las Vegas between Fury and Wilder, there was an air of serenity for Joshua and Usyk, no doubt born out of respect for each other's abilities and achievements in the ring. You know, every fight uh, makes history, and um, I think um, me and Anthony are going to uh, make another step in history. Almost 10 years prior, both had won Olympic gold for their respective countries. And in September of 2021, they united again in the same city. This time at the new state-of-the-art Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, with Usyk ready to deliver British fight fans another display of supreme intelligent boxing. The fight opened tentatively, with Usyk's straight lefts serving as the main highlights. The champion, despite his significant weight advantage, seemed to dial back on his power to improve his accuracy against the nimble challenger. But Usyk's smart use of feints and movement prevented Joshua from settling, as the rounds began stacking in the Ukrainian's favour. Joshua, fatigued from Usyk's stinging combinations, was reduced to a pedestrian-like pace. And as the closing segments of the fight drew near, the 70,000 fans in attendance were resigned to the fact that a new crowning was in a session. Usyk emerged victorious on all three judges' scorecards. It was a stunning performance to become only the third boxer in history after Evander Holyfield and David Hay to win world titles at cruiserweight and heavyweight. Although it shouldn't have been, Usyk's victory was seen as a surprise to the mainstream sports public, who were largely ignorant of the Ukrainian savviness in the ring. As such, expectations were placed on the Briton to activate his rematch clause and correct the tentative strategy employed by his corner team. 
and in response, Joshua sought the coaching expertise of Robert Garcia, known for instilling an aggressive, attack-minded approach in his subjects. He mentioned, you know, I know I need to be more aggressive. I know I need to be a little more of, of, of the, the guy that going out there looking to hurt your opponent. I said, well, that's perfect because that's, that's what everybody knows you need. I think uh, Anthony knows it himself that we're going we're gonna to push him to go for the knockout. The rematch took place almost a year later, this time in Saudi Arabia, a newly emerging home for big time boxing. And with a renewed intensity to their rivalry, the second encounter was fought with a more frantic pace. Under the guidance of his new trainer, Joshua's emphasis on Usyk's midriff had an authentically Mexican flavor. And in the ninth round, put the champion on the retreat with a perfectly placed uppercut to the body. It enabled the much improved Joshua to mount the most meaningful assault in their two fight rivalry. But remarkably, after the one minute rest, a revived Usek came out of the blocks with an unmatchable pace to remove whatever confidence Joshua had built up from the previous round. Once again, the closing segments of the fight saw a depleted Joshua unable to contend with Usyk's impalpable work rate and movement. According to CompuBox, in the last three rounds, Usyk threw 232 punches to Joshua's 149 and outlanded him 79 punches to 29. The fight this time round was certainly more competitive, thanks largely to the improved efforts of Joshua and his corner team. But Alexander Usyk's brilliance for the second time stood alone. And in addition to the WBA, WBO and IBF world titles, he added the prestigious Ring Magazine belt to his collection to now make a powerful case for being the best heavyweight in the world. The demise of Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder meant the two of the most high-profile names in the division were eliminated. Two power-punching titans that exemplified the traits most associated with heavyweight boxing, left in the dust by a new pairing that instead exuded qualities of defense, movement and incredible fighting IQ. He does look nervous, I was just thinking that. Mm. Welcome to big time boxing, Mosh. In the time Alexander Usyk was concluding his rivalry with Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury kept busy with two effortless defenses that showcased his new mainstream profile. Live from Wembley Stadium in London, it's time for the main event of the evening. The first came against his mandatory challenger, Dillian White, in front of a packed 94,000 crowd at Wembley Stadium. It was hoped the fellow Brit would be a lively threat, but after six lacklustre rounds, the champion dismissed him with a well-disguised uppercut. Fury with the uppercut! What a punch! The right uppercut! Dillian White flat on his back at Wembley Stadium with an absolute piece of a punch! The fall of 2022 then saw the third encounter between rival-turned-friend Derek Chisora in what Manny brushed off as a redundant contest against a clearly faded opponent. Continues to whip those punches in and By 2023, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk were the two clear standout heavyweights in the world, with not a single worthy challenger elsewhere in sight. I'm going to write you off. I've already done one Ukrainian Klitschko dinner, and I'll do you as well, Gappy Teeth. Pressure then mounted on the two to turn their attention towards each other, to create the first ever undisputed heavyweight showdown in the four belt era. And perhaps the timing couldn't be more appropriate as a new force by now was taking center stage in the entertainment and sports world. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, with its Vision 2030 project, is currently on a quest to diversify the country's economy and develop public service sectors such as health, education and tourism. 
And one of the main avenues to achieve this mission is through sport. Boxing, as was certain to happen, was the first industry to step forward and lead the embrace when Anthony Joshua recaptured his heavyweight titles in 2019. That, it was assumed, was an isolated event in which promoters and fighters were careful to treat as the norm. But since then, this money-driven relationship has deepened to the point where the elite names of the sport are now settling for nothing less. To be honest with you, they're paying big money, yeah, everything they get involved in. Why do you think I'm a prize fighter for brass buttons? I'm a prize fighter, get paid and get laid. And it was under this pretext that the first negotiations between Team Fury and Team Usyk fell frustratingly short. Where before the decision to stage the mega fight at Wembley Stadium would have been a relatively straightforward one, the allure of the Middle East instead stalled the process and both fighters went their separate ways. Can I fight whoever's next after that? If Usyk can be made, if they actually want the fight, then we'll do that fight next. Usyk took the opportunity to satisfy his WBA mandatory request in Daniel Dubois, a once highly touted power-punching prospect that was now relishing his renewed chance to become world champion. But despite his spirited effort in which he replicated Anthony Joshua's tactics of targeting the body, his attempts were also stifled by Usyk's superior skill and experience. Straight, great shot, right hand, great shot, Daniel Dubois down, and Usyk just nods his Meanwhile, Fury, just eight weeks later, led a far more extravagant rehearsal when he took part in a crossover clash with MMA sensation Francis Ngannou, who had never before stepped in a boxing ring. You! 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 Everything in in reality, the fight was nothing more than a giant canopy of a manufactured rivalry. But the outlandish build-up and mind-blowing production quality created an irresistible spectacle to draw in even the harshest of cynics. And to match the madness of the occasion, the surprisingly adept Nganu almost ripped the script by launching a well-timed left hook to catch Fury early on. Fury recovered, as he had done often before in his career. But instead of a routine demonstration of his prowess in the ring, the WBC champion was forced to endure a competitive 10 rounds, in which, astonishingly, he managed to salvage only a narrow split decision win. Disaster was averted, as an alarmed Usyk ringside watched his undisputed opportunity almost fade into dust. I don't know. Were you surprised by the knockdown? For me? Yeah, yeah of course it's a surprise. Yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 Francis, <laughs> be careful, please. I say, Tyson, jab, jab, move, jab. I say. Francis Ngannou's daring audacity to upset the odds meant that the planned Fury versus Usyk showdown in December of 2023 was no longer a possibility. Tyson's got a cut there, so it's no good saying a date. Whilst he's got that cut on the top of his head, we've got to see how that heals. The welt under Fury's eye, as well as being startled by ten strenuous rounds that nobody was expecting, forced both parties to accept a new date for February of 2024. Ever since its foray into boxing, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been determined specifically to stage an undisputed heavyweight title fight. Even as strangers to the business, they too recognize that such an event constitutes an incredibly rare marquee occasion in the sport. Almost a quarter of a century has passed since the last time the heavyweight titles were consolidated into one supreme champion. Therefore, the February 17th date unquestionably marks a symbolic moment for the division. For one of its titleists, it will be an opportunity to ward off the controversies and criticisms that have often hounded his career. Fifteen years ago, when his journey began, only a faithful few believed in his abilities to reach the pinnacle of the sport. Yet he now stands as not just an ordinary world champion, but also a TV personality with mainstream appeal. It's an achievement built primarily on his elemental understanding of the fight game. Crushing the overwhelming odds against him in his two most meaningful triumphs, 
Tyson Fury maintains a notorious reputation of dethroning opponents of colossal stature. Fury has dismantled Deontay Wilder. And whatever the criticisms one can fire in the Gypsy King's direction, very few are in relation to his actual fighting ability. Showcased in the law-defying physics of a six-foot-eight giant, effortlessly maneuvering around the ring to bedazzle his cumbersome foes. But if ever a chink existed in his enormous armor, it may be revealed against a very different type of threat. One in which Fury's wits, for the first time, will be unequivocally matched. Small enough to take shelter from heavier artillery, and agile enough to return fire of his own, the quick-fisted Ukrainian possesses the type of inventiveness which even Tyson Fury has never before encountered. Very, very classy, boxer Alexander Usyk. This evolutionary advanced boxing mind that hoodwinked a plethora of fighting styles and sizes represents one of the most adaptable and intelligent talents in the sport. And this guy is one of the pam -pam -pam best Usyk. Repeated gold medal victories as an amateur becoming undisputed in one of the most competitive divisions at the time, and now standing as a unified world heavyweight champion, puts Oleksandr Usyk on a mission to complete a very unique legacy. Both men stand undefeated. And both men will one day enter the Hall of Fame. But whatever their outstanding achievements of the past, both will recognize the significance of February 17th and how their historic, undisputed clash may ultimately define their incredible careers.